welcome to Dead Man Talking. Come with me as we step into the deep dark forest of fear and let us pray we see sunrise in the morning. Fantastic show for you tonight guys. Wonderful, wonderful story to kick things off. Big thank you to the author Katie X06. As ever, please do let me know down below in the comments what you thought. Please do like and share and help build this channel and community and help us smash for our 10k subscriber mark before April. Without further ado, let's get into tonight's story entitled Silver Bullet Ranch. Let's get straight into that. Quince was pleased with his ranch, his dog Bruce, his son Danny and his wife Rosemary. Danny was going to be celebrating his 16th birthday soon and was starting to help him out around the farm a lot more. Something that Quince desperately needed. Too proud to ask for help and permanently tanned blue-eyed 42-year-old had spent more time outdoors than most would in their entire lifetimes. While most men his age drove BMWs with phones glued to their heads, he was content ploughing the fields on his 93 John Deere tractor. He and Rosemary had been married for 20 years, living in a house they had built to raise a family and grow old together in. A typical, well-adjusted, blue-blooded American family. At least that was the delusional dream they were living. Rosemary was a woman of presence. Standing at five foot ten, she was built like an Amazonian warrior, with a face that could double for Bridget Bardot in her prime. Not only was she beautiful, but charismatic, polished and adventurous all at the same time. Quint would bring her wild flowers and a kiss every morning. Even on the days when they fought, the flowers would be sitting in a vase on the dining room table. Not once in her 38 years of living did Rosemary think she would become a common housewife. Not that she was unhappy, she just thought it was funny how her life had turned out. Summer was drawing to a close and harvest was right around the corner. This is when the family made the majority of their money to live on for the rest of the year. One rainy afternoon, Danny had found an old VHS tape in the attic where he was helping his mother organise a few boxes. It was a horror movie called Texas Chainsaw Massacre and he snuck it over to his best friend Tony's house to watch at a sleepover that night. Little did the boys know that this was the beginning of a very strange passion that they would share for the rest of their lives. They became obsessed with all things frightening, double dog daring one another to go into the cornfields at night, seeing who could stay alone in the dark for the longest. Tony had a younger sister named Nancy, and she loved to tag along in the boys' spooky adventures, but the boys purposely excluded her, as most annoyed older kids do. Danny loved that his birthday fell on Halloween. And now that he was going to be getting his driver's license, he really felt special. Every year around this time, Quint turned his farm into a pickup, your own pumpkin patch and corn maze for all the townspeople to enjoy. Some of the kids from the school came out to see this season's selection and were in for quite a treat as they pulled up to the drive. Tony and Danny had set up a small haunted house that people could walk through on their way to the garden where the pumpkins were ripe for the picking. Filled with pieces inspired by the boys' unconventional infatuation with all things disgusting, the setup made Danny's parents proud of their son's unique taste. Their little family wasn't like anything the town had ever seen before, and they upheld the last name of Reaper with honour. Halloween was finally upon the small Texas town of Handro and the spirit of the season was felt in each of the hearts of its 1,335 residents more than ever this year. Rosemary stood on the back porch and stared at the full moon that was becoming more visible in the early evening sky. Strong arms reached around her waist and kiss was placed on the back of her neck. She didn't have to turn around to know it was her husband. I can't believe Danny is already turning 16. It seems like yesterday we were measuring his height on the kitchen door frame. Quint gave her a squeeze and then whispered into her ear. 
We can always try for another litter. And with a giggle, Rosemary turned around to face him. The last thing I need is you throwing out your old man back because you picked up some brat for a piggyback ride. Quint played along with the scenario. Well, good, because I doubt the supermarket has enough hair dye to camouflage any more of your grey patches. She kissed him hard, making her hairs on Quint's arm stand on end. He loved when she did that. The boys had been working on their attraction all day, but their energy had never been higher than it was on that Saturday afternoon. They even let Nancy help put together the skeleton that dropped onto the unsuspecting patrons as they exited the haunt. She really felt like part of the gang. Bruce came running up the drive, barking behind a car full of adolescent boys that were being dropped off for more festivities. They were impressed by what Tony and Danny had built and were ready for the sun to set so that they could scare anyone brave enough to venture in. As the final details were being put into place to open for the community, Danny's parents took him aside to give him his birthday present privately. They were eerily quiet as they walked around the back of the house to the dilapidated barn that was mainly used for storing Christmas decorations. Danny wasn't quite sure what they could have in there for him, but his hopes were set on a truck or maybe a gun to practice his sharp shooting. They walked in and bolted the door behind them. The inside looked nothing like he expected. It was clean and remodelled with a clear holding cell in the centre of the barn. He wasn't quite sure when his parents had worked on this and was even more confused because when he was there last, it looked as though it could have collapsed any minute. Danny, what we're about to tell you will change your life forever. His mother's eyes were filled with torn anxiety as she spoke to him. Son, you've been blessed with the gift of being an eighth generation lycanthrope. The five foot eight youngster stood with a mouth agape in shock, being well versed in all things supernatural, and he knew that lycanthropes were werewolves. His father began to explain how each father before him passed the curse down from generation to generation for the past 200 years, and now it was his turn. Most new pups in the family turned naturally on their 16th birthday, but Danny was different because his mother was immortal. His transformation needed a little help. He still couldn't believe what he was being told but started to put two and two together, thinking back to seeing his father come in early mornings with wild hair and ripped clothes, mumbling something about the thresher acting up again. His mother led him into the small unit and kissed Danny on the forehead as his father put restraints on his wrists and ankles that were being bolted into the floor and wall. Danny's mind was racing with a million questions, but could not utter a sound. He was on the brink of hysteria. It was an IV bag full of dark red blood hanging higher with a tube leading down to his left brachial artery that his father carefully pricked into him. He could see the sun getting ready to set through the cracks in the boards behind his parents holding each other and tears welling up in his mother's eyes. Danny began to get upset. They didn't even give him a chance to choose. He swore and yelled at them from behind the glass, but they could hear nothing. They knew that he was angry, but it had to be done this way. The Reaper legacy must continue. Danny's heart was about to pump out of his chest and his hands were turning white from trying to pull against the restraints. He was getting very hot and could feel his head beginning to swim, like when he hung his head off the edge of the bed for too long. He cried out in agony as his shoulders and back cracked and twisted with his muscles swelling under the skin. Danny threw his head back and let out a sound he had never heard before. It was like a howling cry of pain and fear. His height grew and his Ghostbusters t-shirt ripped open, revealing his new soft brown coat of fur that now fully covered him from head to paw. His red converse ripped open and his 18 inch feet clawed their way through the canvas, leaving deep scratches in the concrete. Rosemary had seen her husband transform too many times to count, but seeing her son go through this was tearing her up inside. She knew that this day would come, the moment her pregnancy test turned pink. But she would give anything to take his place and give him peace. After about six minutes of thrashing, howling, and giving the one-inch steel alloy chains a true test of the strength, Danny was now a fully transformed werewolf. Rosemary did not even notice that her husband had also turned while standing right beside her. 
It had become so routine for him that there was hardly any pain involved anymore. Quint had complete control of his transformation along with his primitive instincts and emotions. But he knew that Danny would not. His son was in pain, angry, scared and confused as to what had just happened to him. All he wanted to do was scare a few kids in his haunted house with his buds on Halloween. Oh, only if they could see him now. With a push of a button, Rosemary released Danny's shackles and he collapsed onto the ground yelping and moaning. Quint went into the room to tend to his son's wounds, but as he did, Danny sprang up and bolted for the door. Rosemary lunged to shut it before her son could escape, and as she did so, Quint locked his jaws onto Danny's hind leg. With the upper half of his body swiping and snarling at his mother, and his lower half being held back with all of his father's strength, Danny's ears perked up. Someone was approaching the barn. Tony was calling out for Danny, saying that people were starting to show up, and Danny needed to get his ass in gear so they could get scaring. Quint was readjusting his bites when he heard the knocks on the barn door. Danny seized his opportunity and pulled himself free, slamming his mother down as he ran towards the door. Tony could somewhat see the commotion happening between the wooden panels, and backed away as a large wolf-like creature came barreling towards him. The families in the pumpkin patch heard a loud crash and a scream, but thought nothing of it because of the spooky sound effects that were blasting from the haunted house. Nancy could feel something wrong though. Her brother should have been back by now. The barn wasn't but 200 yards away from Danny's house. And with a stuffed black cat in tow, the 14 year old made up to look like an ugly witch began to walk around the back of the house towards the old barn. Breaking his best friend's clavicle with his jaws sent a rush throughout Danny's body, making him crave more flesh to sink his teeth into. Tearing away at Tony's neck and chest as he gurgled up blood, and he fueled his hunger. He couldn't and wouldn't be stopped. His parents wanted a monster, and now they had one. As Nancy rounded the corner of the house, the barn was in sight, but her attention was drawn to the shadow in the cornfield next to her. She stopped moving and listened hard, but all she heard was the screams and moans coming from the CD player in the haunted house. She hugged her stuffed animal tight and continued to make her way up the hill, but still, something didn't feel right. And that is when she saw the bloody heap of clothes on the ground that her brother was wearing not only ten minutes ago. Thinking the boys were playing a trick on her, she began to call out for them, saying that she was going to tell on them if they didn't come out right this second. With no response, she walked closer to the shards of cloth, bone and flesh. Just as she was realising that this was no Halloween prank, she heard a low growl coming from the corn maze. She turned to see a large animal watching her, its eyes the same colour as the tall yellow stalks of corn it hid within. The feral creature began to crawl out of its curtain of security. Nancy was walking backwards towards the barn, never taking her eyes off the beast's crooked, snarling, blood-stained teeth. She heard something stirring in the barn. But whatever it was, couldn't be any worse than what was inching closer to her. Rosemary limped out of the barn with a deep gash in the side of her head and a large knife in her hand. She softly spoke and she called out to Nancy, telling her not to turn around or run, but to continue walking backwards nice and slow. Danny could also hear his mother's voice and he stopped cold in his tracks, remembering for a moment that he was a 16 year old boy, not a mythical piece of folklore about to devour a young girl. Rosemary wrapped Nancy in her arms and pulled her into the barn and this sent Danny over the edge, infuriated that he wasn't being cradled and spoken softly to. He was her son and she turned him into this. This was all their fault, and he was going to make them pay for what they've done. Just as he was going to pounce on them, his father came flying out of the hole that Danny made in the slide of the barn, and slammed into him with all his might. The two beasts bit and scratched deeply into one another's hides as they rolled down the hill towards the house. All the commotion caused everyone in the corn maze to panic and cut themselves on the sharp leaves of the stalks of vegetables they were running through. 
The pumpkin patch was filled with smashed orange fruits all over the ground from the people stepping on them in order to get to the safety of their vehicles as quickly as possible. All the while the patrons and actors within the plastic sheet covered haunted house had no idea anything was going on and just thinking that the soundtrack was playing was the best they'd ever heard. As the two creatures continued to rip each other's bodies open, Rosemary and Nancy ran down the hillside after them. Danny was losing quite a bit of blood from a wide cut that his father put into his side, turning the grass a strange shade of brown under the moonlight. A few of the townspeople had called the sheriff's office to report what was happening, but the officers wouldn't take them seriously, thinking it was merely a Halloween prank. Rosemary ran into the house dragging a terrified Nancy behind her. She told the girl to stay in the hall closet and that everything would be over soon. As she closed the door, she heard Nancy sobbing. Her heart went out to her, but something had to be done to put a stop to this bloodshed. Rosemary went to her bedroom and grabbed a gun out of the bedside table, but this was no ordinary Smith & Wesson revolver. This one shot fine silver from its barrel. Just as she was running out of the back door towards the 500 pounds of muscle and teeth killing one another, she froze, as did the monstrosities in the yard. Danny was on his back with his father's claw about to come down to take a wad out of his son's muzzle. It was like someone had hit the pause button on a movie. Rosemary's eyes scanned where they could to see who had control of the situation because it certainly wasn't her. She heard light footsteps coming from behind her and then felt someone move her fingers off the handle of the gun. It was Nancy with the calmest look on her red blotchy face and something in her eye that sent a chill down Rosemary's spine. The juvenile girl looked up at Danny's mother and winked. This made her feel nauseous with fear she watched Nancy walk towards the two most important men in her life. My mother always told me that the women in our family were special, that they were strong, confident and mysterious. Not in a thousand years did I ever think I would be able to join their ranks, but today I do. Nancy pulled a necklace out of her costume that had a charm depicting a crescent moon that seemed to give off a light of its own. She was talking mainly to Danny as she circled around the frozen brutes mere inches away from her. She told me that I would know when I was ready. I believe that my great grandmother's necklace is a sign that my powers are fully developed. You see girls progress much faster than boys and our maturity level is not based on our age but on our ability to grow beyond any number. As she pointed a gun between the icy blue eyes of the beast hanging in mid-air, she said, I'm a real witch now, and pulled the trigger without hesitation. The gun fired loudly, making Nancy almost jump out of her skin. She watched as the life left the animal's body and turned back into its human form. The girl looked back at Rosemary, whose tears were running down her face and mouthed the words, I'm sorry, to the widow. Nancy focused solely on Quint's body as she guided it with her mind to a spot on the ground near his wife. She turned and looked into Danny's lemon yellow eyes to see if there was anything left of her brother's best friend. She saw a shred of his former self, but not enough to save. She pointed a firearm against his skull and was going to pull the trigger when she suddenly had a change of heart. You can be useful to me, old Danny boy. Witches and werewolves have never really gotten along, but maybe you and I can change that today. She spun around and met Rosemary's gaze as she stood still, frozen, in place on the porch. My plan can't work with the mother in the picture though. Shame too. I really liked you, Mrs. Reaper. No use in wasting silver bullets on a mortal though. Nancy wanted to test out another one of her powers, mind control. It would be tricky, but she believed she could do it. She knew she could. Looking back at Danny, she released his body from her hold, and he crouched down as if to lunge at her, but stopped. She was controlling his body with her mind. He was at her mercy, as a prisoner within his own flesh. Nancy moved out of the way as he began to walk on all fours towards his mother. He was trying so hard to fight her demands, but was powerless against her. Once he was standing face to face with the woman 
who gave birth to him 16 years ago. He saw the tears flow in from her face, making wet spots on her blouse. He tried to turn back into the body he wanted to be, but as long as that full moon hung in the sky, he was a slave to his curse. Nancy nodded her head and watched with pride as Danny made his mother look as though she just went through a paper shredder. She let out a loud cackle as she called the beast back to her. His spirit was broken, which was exactly what she needed to get what she wanted. What the police saw at the Silver Bullet Ranch as they walked to the grounds would give them nightmares for years. Nancy and Danny were missing and Rosemary had to be identified by her dental records. They also had to go through the haunted house to separate the props from the real remains of Danny's friends. Until now the massacre has never been explained. And you may be wondering how I know all of this. Well, you're about to find out. Wow, wow, absolutely fantastic story there. Would have liked to have really found that around Halloween. Would have been absolutely perfect, no doubt. But as ever, guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I. Big, big thank you to the author, Katie X 6 And as ever, please do let me know down below in the comments what you thought. Please do like and share and help build this channel and community. Help us smash through the 10K subscriber mark before our two-year anniversary in April. As ever, I hope you're all well and happy. And above all, remember, be safe, not sorry.